All right, Lurch and I out here today on this uh, windy spring day. Now, mostly we do motorcycle videos on this channel. Got something different today. Behind me is my 2000 Bayliner, and it has a Mercruiser uh, Alpha 1 Gen 2 out drive, uh, stern drive, and we're gonna change the seawater impeller in it. It would be the same if you had a Gen 1. It's very similar. And uh, the reason we're making the video is because I couldn't find any great videos about it on YouTube. So we're gonna do it law-abiding biker style, step-by-step -step tutorial for you. And uh, with that said, uh, let's get our hands dirty, huh? All right, so here are the items and tools that you're gonna need for this project. And uh, we've got a quarter inch ratchet, a three eighths ratchet drive, a long extension, short extension, a half inch wrench, a five eighths wrench, and then uh, sockets, shallow well there. We've got a five eighths, nine sixteenths, half inch, and five sixteenths. And then just a couple flathead screwdrivers. Some uh, gasket scrapers, you may need those if the gaskets are stuck on. And then we've got some form of gasket sealant to make sure the new gaskets seal up real good. We've got some uh, marine grade grease there. And that's the actual kit that we're using, uh, impeller replacement. And they're pretty standard, the model number or uh, part number 47-8M0100526. That fits a lot of years and makes, but definitely get online or with your uh, parts dealer and verify that it'll work again. We're putting this in an Alpha 1 Gen 2, uh, and it comes with all the gaskets and the impeller. And then you're gonna need a couple quarts of 90 weight gear oil, and we've got a pump so that we can pump the lower unit back up. And uh, we're gonna show you how to change the lower uh, unit uh, oil while we're doing this project. And by the way, I will try to throw links uh, in the description to the tools used and the parts. All right, so I'm inside the boat and the first thing you'll wanna do is put your transmission in gear. So make sure this is forward and clicks into place. That'll keep our uh, shift linkage in place when we uh, take the lower unit off. And you wanna make sure of course that it's in gear. The way you do that is just spin your prop. If you hear that clicking noise, that means that it's in gear and you're good to go. Okay, and so now what he's gonna do, this is a little trick, is uh, he's just gonna bungee cord the prop with a couple different bungee cords uh, in place so that it does not rotate. Uh, as we drop this uh, lower unit, it's very helpful to not have the shaft move at all. That way when we put it back together, the splines will be lined up and you'll see the splines uh, after we get this lower unit off. So he's just gonna bungee cord that prop in place. All right, he's got all the bungee cords on there. We can uh, proceed to drop this lower unit. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and drain the fluid first thing out of this uh, lower unit. Just uh, if I didn't mention, you will need a flathead screwdriver and the tools that you'll need. And he's just gonna back that out and he's got his drain pan underneath it. And then moving up, there's a, another top bolt there with a flathead. He's gonna go ahead and remove that. And the reason he's removing that is that will uh, vent it and it will allow the uh, oil below to drain faster. All right, so in the engine compartment here is uh, of course your reservoir for the uh, stern drive. And you can also take this cap off too to let it breathe a little bit more and drain that heavy 90 weight uh, oil out of there. And another thing, if you didn't want to necessarily change your gear oil while doing this project, you could just pinch this line off with some clamps. And then when you took your stern drive off, you would lose, uh, you know, like a half a cup of oil or something, and then you could just replace that. But mine was due to be changed out, so that's what we're gonna do. All right, those are your two plugs there. The one with the magnet on it goes in the bottom. The other one goes in the top. All right, and with his uh, flathead screwdriver there, he'll just tighten that down. All right, and just going back in with the top one there. All right, and he'll just finish that off with a screwdriver. We're actually gonna take this out in a bit when we refill it, but it's windy out today and we just don't want a bunch of crud in there, so we'll just seal that off for now. Okay, and with a 5 8 uh, socket and a 5 8 wrench on bottom, he's gonna loosen this one. There's actually four. There's two on the right side of the unit there and two on the left side. He's gonna leave that... Uh, most rear one, the first one he did there, loose, uh, and not take it all the way off. That'll kind of be our safety bolt. And what I mean by that is we'll pull that out uh, at the end and undo it. We don't want this whole unit to drop on us. But that uh, front one there, he's gonna go ahead and remove that all the way out. And he can remove that nut off the bottom and then he can pull that bolt out. And it's actually, uh, that bolt has a washer on it. So retain all that hard work because we're gonna reuse it. All right, and just moving to the other side of the unit here. And those can be pretty tight as you see. And again, he's just gonna loosen this one, keep it as a safety bolt. 
and he'll finish off there with his fingers getting that nut off the bottom and he'll pull that bolt and washer out. All right, he's got a half inch socket. There's a hole in the top of the drive there and there is a bolt in there. And he's gonna start backing this out. And again, this is why we left the safety bolts in there, just as we loosen things up so we don't lose this whole unit. But there is one on the back that we're gonna have to contend with here in a moment. And I'll mention that as he's loosening that, there's a plate on the bottom. And so make sure your hand's on that. It actually threads into that plate. And so now that the plate's off the bottom of there, we're gonna leave that bolt in the uh, hole there because uh, we can uh, separate the unit with it in there. All right, so he's gonna reach up in there. There's a speedometer hose up in there and it's just got a little push button on the side and you push on it and pull up and that disconnects it. Uh, we'll want that out of the way. Now he's gonna go up. There's a bolt on top there and it is a half inch and he's got his wrench in there and he's just gonna start uh, wrenching that off of there. Okay, so you can do this by yourself, but it definitely helps to have two people to do this. And that is, we're gonna start separating the uh, lower unit from the upper unit. And of course, once we get it kind of separated a little bit, we'll work together and we'll remove those safety uh, bolts and nuts out of there. And then we will uh, gently slide everything out and remove the lower from the upper. All right, you don't need anything fancy, but you don't want to lay this unit on its side. So we just grabbed some saw horses, a couple two by fours, you can just see that gives a good platform uh, so that we can actually work on this unit and replace that impeller. So we're gonna start uh, disassembling this and you can see the housing uh, there, the uh, silver housing, that's actually where your impeller is inside there. Now, remember we bungee corded the prop on this guy because uh, we don't want it to move. And so you don't, want to move this shaft or turn it at all with the splines on it that's why we did the bungee cords and then up front he's going to point to it as your shift linkage don't move that you want to keep that right where it is so just uh, take care that uh, way everything will go back together very nicely for us right now there's a tube there and he's going to pop that that's the actual tube where the water goes up and connects to hoses and actually goes to your engine to cool it and uh, so he'll get that out of the way right now all right, so he's gonna remove this rubber bushing from around the bottom of the spline shaft there. And again, making, uh, taking care not to turn the shaft and just pulling straight up on that. Okay, and with this 5 16th socket there and quarter inch drive with a little extension, there's four bolts that go around this silver housing. And he's just gonna be working on these right now. And just moving around to that other one there. And then there's two more that he'll have to remove on the rear here. All right, and with those four bolts removed, he can go ahead and pull this housing straight up again, taking care not to turn the shaft, and he'll turn that towards us, and we'll see that that's where the actual impeller sits in there. And you'll wanna take note when you take this out of how the impeller fins are curved. You see, they're going one direction, so we'll wanna put our new impeller back in the same way. All right, and then take note, there is a metal key on the shaft there, just uh, pull that out. All right, and so with a screwdriver, he's just gonna pop this metal plate there. We are gonna replace that, it comes in the kit, and slide that off the shaft. All right, now that the metal plate's off, he's continuing to use his gasket scraper there just to uh, clean everything up before we lay down new gaskets. Okay, so our kit doesn't come with this, but some kits do. It's really up to you whether you wanna replace it, and it really just covers your bearings. And there's a hole on both sides he's pointing to with a screwdriver. If your kit comes with that, just make sure that this well is all cleaned out because you don't want to dump a bunch of junk down into your bearings. But you just stick a screwdriver in the two holes there and pop that up, um, being careful not to rotate the shaft. And then you put the new one over. But again, the kit that we got does not come with that and uh, it doesn't generally need to be replaced. All right, so we're gonna start putting the metal plate on and gaskets on. And uh, this doesn't come in a kit, but we're gonna use Forma Gasket Sealant. Uh, recommended to use that. We wanna make sure uh, with the gaskets that everything seals really good uh, so that uh, we don't have any air leaks. You want that uh, impeller chamber completely sealed off so you get a good pull and push of water. So we'll be using that. All right, in a moment, we're actually gonna put uh, gasket sealant on this. But we want to show you that it only goes one way and so he's going to put it on the wrong way and you'll see that it the way it's machined the holes won't line up for the bolt so make sure you know which side goes down when he flips it around everything will line up uh, with the holes so just make sure you have that dialed in uh, before you put your sealant on so you know which way it goes back on all right and so he's just going to apply 
some gasket sealant to the bottom. Of course, that's the bottom, the side that's gonna go down. And you don't need to put a bunch, just run a bead around the whole thing. And now he's just gonna spread it around. Of course, he's got his rubber gloves on there. Spread it all around so it's uh, covering the width of the gasket there. Okay, and with the gasket sealant on the bottom, you can put that uh, metal gasket back in place there and get everything lined up. All right, and now that that's in place, on the top of it, he's gonna add gasket sealant and again, spread it around with his fingers so it covers the width of the metal gasket. All right, so he's got his large metal plate now. This only goes one way and there's a smooth side to it and a rough side, the rough side goes down. And so he's gonna go ahead and install that over the shaft and putting it the right way will assure that the bolt holes line up properly. All right, so this old impeller looking pretty good, really. Um, but we're still gonna replace it and you should definitely be replacing these like every two years. It depends how fast they'll wear, depending on if you're in shallow water or a lot of sand, you're sucking up particles and um, uh, also that rubber can dry rot in there. If you're in deeper water, it might last longer, but good rule of thumb is every couple years, because this, if it fails, is a catastrophic failure. You're gonna be stuck on the lake if you're not uh, getting water to cool your engine or you're gonna overheat your engine. So we're gonna go ahead and he's gonna pop that out and we're noting which direction. Again, those fins are turned and you can see counterclockwise. And so we're gonna, when we put it back in, we're gonna to wanna to turn the new impeller counterclockwise. All right, and so one thing on this housing, we're not replacing it, it didn't come in our kit. They rarely probably need to be replaced, but you just wanna inspect the inside and make sure it's not grooved out. If you had a bunch of sand up in there over time, it could wear and you'd wanna replace that housing, but uh, we don't need to. And so he's got his marine grade grease there and he's just gonna grab some and lube the inside of that housing. And the reason we're doing that is it's gonna make it much easier uh, to get the impeller in. All right, he's got the new impeller. He's also just gonna grab that marine grade grease here and grease up the impellers real good. Again, this is all just to help you get it back into the housing. All right, and so the impeller can go in either way. And so he's just gonna hold the housing and then this can be a little bit of a bear, but uh, he's just turning it. And you see with grease, uh, it makes it pretty simple. And he's turning it to make sure those impellers are all facing the right way because that's the way it turns. Okay, so he's got his next gasket there. Gray side will go up, so he's gonna flip it over. And that's the side that he's gonna put his gasket sealant on. Again, spreading it around with his finger, the width of the gasket. Okay, so he's got his gasket sealant on there now. And of course that side is gonna go down over the metal plate. And he'll take care to line the holes up properly there. All right, now he's taking his gasket seal. And of course it came with a little bit um, on it. That's why the top side is gray there, but we're gonna add some additional sealant just to make sure everything seals up real nice. All right, so he's got just a little bit of marine grease on his finger there, he's putting that there. Really all we're doing that for is to keep the key in place. That way it won't fall out when we're putting the impeller on and the housing. All right, so we're ready to put the housing with the impeller back on. You'll wanna note, he's gonna point to it, there's a groove in that impeller and that is gonna line up with the key and that's why the impeller actually spins on the shaft there. So you gotta make sure you get that lined up and uh, he turned it uh, and got it as close as he could and as he's putting that housing on, he'll watch it to make sure that it's lining up. Just working there and he's looking at it and you can hold your finger up there and hold the impeller a little bit but you can see it pop there and he's in that channel now. So he's got his four bolts that we saved, the hardware and he's gonna get those fingers started on all four corners of the housing. All right, he's got his 5 16 inch socket there, and you don't wanna just crank one corner down and then the next, he's just gonna get them just slightly tight all the way around. That way we get even pressure as we're tightening the housing up, even pressure down on those gaskets and sealant. And now he's gonna go around and just uh, tighten them all down and just tighten maybe another quarter turn. You don't wanna strip them out. We've got plenty of uh, gaskets and sealant to seal that housing up. You can see just about how much he gave it there. All right, so this comes in your kit. Uh, in the one hand, he's uh, got the face seal, all right? And then the face seal setting tool. And that goes over it. It's gonna help us install this without doing damage to it. But uh, to make it easier, he's gonna put a little bit of grease on the inside of the face seal there. All right, and on the shaft. And then uh, you can see uh, how he has that uh, oriented um, so that it goes on that way. Then he can put his face seal tool over it and slide it down into place all the way down. And again, 
that tool just makes it so uh, it seats down in there good and you don't cause any damage to it. All right, and so just a reminder earlier, we took that water tube coupler off the uh, housing there and uh, there's O-rings in there. So we're gonna go ahead and change those out. And then he's got a screwdriver there. Inside there is your O-ring. You can see you got the old one out there. All right, so he got the O-ring out of that side. He'll flip it around and there's another O-ring on that side. And again, just using his screwdriver. All right, and he just got it out there. So the kit comes with the new ones. They are orange instead of black. And he's gonna go ahead and seat those down in there. There is a channel in there that you've gotta work them into. Make sure they're sitting in there. He'll flip it around. And of course, a new one on that side. He'll work it into the channel. And looks like he's getting that one seated there. And with the O-rings replaced, he can go ahead and put that coupler back together now. And he can now go ahead and put the coupler back on the impeller housing. All right, so he's just putting a little marine grade grease there in the splines and around the top of that shaft. That'll make it easier uh, for installation when we put the lower back up on the upper unit. All right, and don't forget, very last, before we put the lower back on the upper there is your quad ring. This comes in your kit. He's putting just a little bit of grease on it uh, just to make sure that it stays in the channel there. And we're good to go to put this uh, back on. All right, so we're gonna be working on getting the lower unit put back uh, to the upper unit. And there's a couple things to note that are up inside there. Um, the first is where the shaft goes and the splines. Of course, that's why we didn't want to ever turn the shaft. Those splines should line up. The second part of that is where the coupler will actually go on there and you got to get that lined up so as you're putting the lower on just make sure that those things uh, are getting lined up properly and of course as you get the lower uh, all lined up and uh, it seats properly on the upper you can insert uh, the bolts and uh, at least a couple of them and get the nuts started to uh, kind of hold it into place and just know guys, when you're working on this, it's kind of a bear. It's probably the most difficult part of the project is getting everything lined up. And if you feel like your splines aren't lining up, you can turn that prop. Uh, we turned it clockwise just a little bit and that turns that shaft just a hair and we we're able to get those splines lined up and get the lower onto the upper. All right, so of course, as we were getting the lower on there, we started the two bolts there um, at the rear. And now he's moving to the front and just getting everything uh, at least finger started before we uh, tighten it down with a wrench. Remember two bolts on this side and two on the other. All right, and don't forget you've got the uh, one bolt there that he's gonna finger start before we put the actual metal plate over that. All right, and he's just back up underneath there. And of course he's snapping. It just snaps into place your speedometer hose. And he already got that bolt finger started up in there. And with his half inch wrench, he's just starting to get it snug. He's not gonna tighten anything down all the way yet. Uh, that allows you to line everything up real good. At the very end, we'll come around and snug everything down to final specs. All right, and so he's just up underneath there and he's actually gonna snug this one down with his 9 socket there because we've gotta put the plate back over now. All right, so he's putting his plate back up in there and that bolt on the top is half inch. He's got a socket and an extension and he's just gonna get that at threads right into the plate. And now he's gonna get this one snug down and he's gonna snug this one and go ahead and finish it off and tighten it down all the way. And now he is going up with his half inch wrench and he is gonna do the final tightening of that rear bolt there. All right, now uh, he, he's gonna tighten the two on this side and two on the other side and he's gonna get them tightened down all the way. And there are torque specifications, I'm sure, on these. If you wanna get a torque wrench out, feel free. And if I didn't mention, that is a 5.8 socket and a 5.8 wrench on the bottom there with a long extension. There we go, and he'll just get the other side tightened down. All right, so before we fill the transmission back up with oil, make sure you lower your stern drive. Uh, try to get it as level as possible. All right, and there's a plug at the top. We're gonna, with the flathead screwdriver, just gonna back that plug out. All right, so now that we have the stern drive lowered all the way, we're gonna take that bottom plug out, and he's got just a stubby screwdriver. That can be helpful because you might not be able to fit a full-size one up in there. And because it's down all the way now, we're gonna lose additional fluid. Remember, we drained that at the beginning, but uh, the unit was up. So we wanna just uh, give it a few uh, minutes here and drain the rest of whatever oil was pooled up in there. 
All right, and he's just threading that uh, hose up in there now. It threads right into where the plug goes. And of course, that hose is hooked to the pump handle and the quart of oil. Okay, and he's just gonna start pumping and pumping fluid into the transmission there. And really what you're looking for, he's just gonna keep pumping as we're looking for it to start dripping out of the top hole. That would mean your transmission is full. All right, and we're getting into our second quart of oil here. All right, and it's just starting to seep at the top there. You can see it, and that means it is full. Now your kit does come with new O-rings for the plug, and he's already put that on. It's yellow, so make sure you replace those O-rings. He's gonna put that top plug back in, and he'll go ahead and tighten it down with his flathead screwdriver there. All right, so now he's gonna unthread the hose there, and he's gonna put the other plug right up there, so when he pulls that out, he can just put the plug right in there. You don't wanna lose too much. And of course we replaced the o-ring on that too and that plug is the one with the magnet on the end and he got that and he's going to finish it off with his stubby screwdriver and once we put the uh out drive back up we can use a bigger screwdriver to make sure that's tightened down real good okay and then don't forget to come back up and top your reservoir off to the full line all right and he's got that filled we'll just uh put the cap back on okay so now we're going to want to test make sure everything's working so he's putting the uh earmuffs if you will over the uh, water intakes there that we'll hook a hose up to here then we'll turn the water on and fire it up all right and when you start the engine up and you're sucking water through the system you want to make sure that you're getting circulation and to do that there's exhaust ports on both sides and you can see him pointing that that's where water should be coming out on both sides that means you're getting circulation and the pumps working the impeller all the way through the motor and back out 